Hi everybody. Um, my lighting looks a little bit different today. I don't know why. Maybe because um, maybe the light is changing. It's starting to get into fall. So maybe that could be it. But anyway, I am Alicia Diane and I am your host here for Studying the Masters. I'm excited to draw today. I'm excited to do James Woods. Um, James Woods is different than a lot of the other artists that I've talked about so far in James in um <clears throat> sorry in Studying the Masters. Mostly because um, he's a fairly relatively new compared to a lot of them. And um, he is one that I found just on IMDb. I was actually um, at a panel one day and um, some artists were talking and talking about, you know, industry and how to find people that you're, that you like and um, some of the artists that maybe could influence your work. And um, the one of the ways to do that is to go to IMDb and search for movies that you're interested in, in artwork, and look at the um, at the cast and check out the, the art department. So that's what I did. I looked at the art department and I found James Wood and I started to look through his website and I started to look uh, Google him and find out um, some of his drawings. So actually I found him, he was one of the um, character designers for Moana and I wanted to, uh, as soon as I started looking through his work, I was like, wow, he's really, He's really impressive. Like his stuff is really nice. I really like it a lot. So he might be a newer artist, but um, nonetheless, he's still really talented. And so we're going to be doing some of his drawings today. I'm going to switch over now to my Photoshop window. And let's go ahead over there. Okay. I'm going to have to switch this out. Because this is not where I got my resources from. So let me put that out there. I'm kind of like, lately I've been like running. <laughs> running to do everything because like it's like the first thing barely just getting through my first week of graduate school so i'm kind of trying to figure it out still um it's going fine i just you know have still trying to get into the swing of everything so anyway if you want to go ahead and grab a pencil to draw with or a pen then now would be a good time to do that so i would encourage you to do that i'm going to write the name of the website now where i got his work okay Link is his official website. I'm not sure because it looks different than it did the last time I went to it, but I'm hoping that it's his official website. But this is where I got his images from. And it's jamwoods.tumblr.com. <clears throat> and I'm going to make this maybe just a little bit different. That should be good. So it's not from Live Lily, even though that is a great website. <clears throat> that I recommend that you go to if you get a chance. And it never fails. Every time I eat a granola bar, <laughs> Nature Valley is out to get me. Every time I eat one, like I, I end up choking somehow. Um, let me fill this in. On the color, yes. And then I'm gonna rasterize this. Select, move this down. So that is the reference. And I'm going to save this. Yes. And let's go ahead and start. So I have a couple of images here. We're going to do some, um, I think we'll do 10 minute poses. Those seem to work better for, for, um, referencing other people's art just because you have to kind of adjust to their style and a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, I've just a few and I'll bring in more if we get the chance to. His stuff is kind of unique, but um, he's an alumni of Cal, which um, is a fairly popular school. Uh, well, fairly, it's kind of an understatement. <laughs> it's an incredibly popular school of people who are in, um, they have a really good undergraduate program for animation and traditional animation. If you have not been to undergraduate school and you'd like to look for an art school, maybe you want to consider that much because I, they have a really good reputation. Let's transfer the size of this. 
Okay, and this one, I'm going to show that I'm going to get maybe 50. Okay. And this one is actually a portrait of Beyonce, actually. <laughs> I mean, who would think? But it's a, I like the design. I like the motion of it. I like kind of what he's doing with the scratchy lines. And um, just the motion of that hair is really neat. So I really like this. This is really neat. So let's give this a try. I'm going to go ahead now and grab a bit for, I think, to start with. And we can go ahead and get going on this one. And I'm going to start a timer now. So we are on the light layer, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and and see what happens with this one. Actually, yesterday was Beyonce's birthday, I hear. Not that. <laughs> Not that you care. <laughs> but I just thought that it's pretty cool. I think she's. Well, obviously, she's a pop culture icon. I, I like that he did it, this kind of, kind of abstract surface. Uh, I don't know if this would be considered abstract, but I don't know, it kind of is. It's just like unconventional, I guess, maybe. And I've noticed like um, there's definitely a certain quality that I noticed to artists are com who are coming out of CalArts, um, particularly for the um, undergraduate and traditional animation program that they have, there's definitely sort of a, a quality that I think that they share together, which I think, which is really like an appealing way of drawing, which is not necessary. You don't have to draw in this style. But I do appreciate it, and I do think that it's something that we can learn from. So that's why I included him. And if you have a particular artist, I have not yet chosen the artist for next week for studying the masters. So if there's like a particular artist, maybe he's a concept artist. Mostly right now, I'm doing um, either visual development or animators for the animation industry. Um, that's what I'm kind of try to keep to for this segment anyway. Maybe um, for the next volume, I'll do some another type of artist. Maybe we'll even do some painters or just really experiment with um, different artists' work and just try and get what we can from them and learn from them. But for now, I really want to keep it as um, animators and visual development artists, character designers, that sort of thing. So if there is a particular artist that you would like to, us to study here, then just let me know in the comments and we can definitely that down. I think that would be cool. Get some requests. <laughs> I want to get that hair going. I guess we look like hair. Even the layer of colors that are different. I even have some um, concept art here from Moana that we'll get to. So how was everybody's week? We just came out of a holiday weekend. It's uh, not really a big, it was honestly, it was too long of a weekend. <laughs> if you ask me, I could, I could have gone for a shorter weekend. It's just like, you know, the house feels cramped and it's like, you know. <laughs> If I could have traveled, I think it would have probably been. But I didn't travel. Uh, you know, traveling is expensive. I wish it was a little bit more affordable sometimes. And I love seeing places. So that would have been nice. But that's not where I'm at at the moment. So I just stayed home. Didn't do too much over the weekend. But I do have an exciting um, weekend coming up this weekend. Which I will be over there at the LA County Fair, and I'm looking forward to being over there. I will talk more about that on Figure Friday. And I kind of want to get that head shape, make sure that I'm keeping the alignment of her head consistent. And that mouth just goes all the way down to the bottom of her chin almost.
So something I think about, even if you're doing um, like a celebrity fan art piece, which you know, can seem like, you know, maybe it's not as creatively fulfilling. If you do something like this, where you really like play with it, I think it can be really exciting. Like just doing, um, just saying, well, I'm just doing a drawing of Beyonce might be like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it might not sound that interesting offhand, but if you do it like this or something that's totally in your own style and you, Maybe you don't even know what your style is, but you really maybe you want to play with it and do it in um, a particular show style. Like maybe you wanted to do a portrait of Beyonce as like a Rugrats style or something. You know, maybe if you play around with it like that, if you like be more open to some possibilities there, I think that it can be really fun. Because that's really cool. I think. It's too neat. I say about my week um, had to do a lot of reading <laughs> I think I was beginning to talk about that um, last week I don't remember if I was talking about it on Tuesday or if I was talking about it I mean I don't remember if I was talking about it on Wednesday or if I was talking about it on Friday but um, as expected I had to do a lot of reading of some text that I didn't really get right away I mean Nothing can really make you feel like you have a long way to go <laughs> than a piece of tech that just makes no sense at all. So that was kind of part of my weekend, wasn't all of it. But I did spend a little bit of time doing some meetings. A little homework. And the movie of the day actually is like I'm running out of um options for Disney, at least on Netflix and what I have successful. This is, okay, let's see what else can we do. Definitely the hat is, I mean, it's way too small. The hat is a lot longer. It's almost, almost the length of her hair, not quite. And this character actually reminds me I have to go ahead and get a list of all the movies that he did because it, I mean, obviously it wasn't just um, one, even though I pulled some images from there. I'll have to go ahead and look, and maybe we should do that after this draw and go ahead and see some of the images that he had. And kind of explore a little bit of what he's doing. And get. If you haven't already yet, you can go ahead and grab some, grab a pencil or a pen and a pad, and I encourage you to draw along with me. That way you'll get the full benefit of this. If it is a beneficial thing. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's good. I, I really, you know what I really think is um, one of the strongest aspects of James Wood's work is the colors that he's choosing. His color palettes are really, really pleasing to look at. They are all these like pastel, um, desaturated colors and desaturation, which a lot of people don't know because I'm going to assume that a lot of people don't know because I didn't know exactly what it meant for a long time. It just means that it's not the pure color, like right out of the color wheel. It's either mixed with um, whites or blacks with tints, or it has um, more of another color in it. And it's really an impure version of that color. Like it either has a white, a black, a gray in there somewhere it's not a bright bright color a lot of um animation work that you might see is really really bright pure color and it can 
be a little bit tiring for your eye to look at. I know I have that problem with coloring things. I always make my art a little bit overly um, saturated, and I think that's one thing that I definitely want to work on. <laughs> so maybe practicing. I think we'll have to go through after we do this. After we do this series, I think we'll just do color some color studies too. If you're interested, uh, definitely let me know if you're interested in color studies because I think that that can really make a huge impact on your work. And it's something that, I don't know, I think it takes longer. <laughs> For me, at least, I think it takes longer to, to kind of get it, to get in the swing of, of working with color in that way. And let's see. Yeah, let's do this drawing. This is a really nice one. I don't even know what this is from. I just really like it a lot. And like I said, let me go ahead on to you and show you guys a little bit more what he's done. So... Kind of make this a little bit bigger. There's something about what he's doing that's really cool. I don't know what it is, but something. Okay, let me see if I can swap over to show you guys um, a little bit more of what I'm seeing with this stuff. Special screen. I'm going to switch it to our Google window. I can do that. And this is just what the pages that I was looking at. Okay, so let's look at some of his work. This is page three. So I'm going to go back. These are just like kind of scribbly drawings, right? But there's something about them that's really neat. This one is really good, too. I don't really like this. Maybe we should pull this one in. Something really cool about that one, also. But if you see like these colors that he's like the skin on this one is purple. He's using really different colors. Now look at that. This is blue. These are I don't know what it is about them. This is concept art. But there's something really, really nice about it. Most of the work that I see him do is really scribbly. Look at this is Santa Claus. This is um and this is all from his blog, which I mean now that not, that I'm seeing more of it. I think I was looking for that one logo. This is one that I was looking for that I didn't see before. That he's had on his website for a while. Page four, let's see, page five. Yeah, this is some of the stuff that I saw before too. That's really cool. I don't even know what that is. Is that Bigfoot? I don't <laughs> I don't know. That's really nice. It's like a Bigfoot in the trip. That's so cool. It's just it's different, but it's still a, it reminds me of like if you've ever looked at some of the old classic art, like I don't know, like what they were doing in France in the late eighteen hundreds and like European art in the late 1800s, it kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's part of what he's getting from. I'm not going to say that that's everything where he's getting his ideas from, but there's definitely something about that era. Okay. But these are really neat. Okay. I am just going to. I'm probably going over these. Some of, it just seems like it's worth showing. <laughs> so if you want to visit the website, it's jamwoods.tumblr.com. And I think I'll just go back. You see, he's a young, he's like a young guy. He's really young. Younger than I thought, I guess. I don't know when this picture was. But young guy making really interesting drawings. So it just goes to show you, it's not about age, there's all different ages where people get their skills and talents and reach their peaks and all of that. So um, I feel like you're never too young, you're never too old to be really talented. So let's go ahead and go back to Photoshop. Ah, 
Where am I? <laughs> Let's go back to Photoshop and do some of these. Okay, we're just going to do as many as we can. Hopefully we have time to do um, more. I'm going to have to, I'm only going to have till 10, unfortunately. I wish we had longer, but an hour is, it's a start. <laughs> and maybe we'll have to do two of these a week. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out because we still have so much more drawing to do together. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start this one. I have no idea what this is from, but I think it looks really interesting. So let's go ahead and give it a try. And if, you know, he's working at Disney Feature, then, you know, there's got to be something, something to him that we can probably learn from, right? Not that that's everything, but definitely counts for something. Okay, let's see what we can do with this one. There's something appealing to me, really appealing to me about um, really loose drawings that still have that something. I work like that a lot, actually, but I don't even know what to do with my sketches because I because I started like I think I talked about this before too. I started like really trying to sketchbook every single day um, for like the last. The last year I really started taking sketchbooking like really more seriously as not just as drawing from life in my sketchbook say that because you know everyone keeps a sketchbook and you doodle in it from you know once in a while but it's different when you're sketching from life all the time and you're filling up sketchbooks on a regular basis and I think like I really started to really do that like sketch from life in my sketchbook and really do it often about a year ago. And I have tons of these like really loose, um, really loose sketches that I think are appealing because they're funny to me, but I don't know if they're shareable or if any of them are like, I should translate them or like work on them a little bit longer. I'm trying to figure out what the balance is between loose sketches and that you want to put in your portfolio, but you're not sure, like, hmm, what should I do with it to, like, make it look <laughs> like it belongs in my portfolio? I don't want to just put, like, just scribbly sketches, but at the same time, if you're looking with me at those drawing sets now, some of those were really loose in um, James's portfolio there. And his, you know, his Tumblr, that is his portfolio, whatever you have online as your, um, as your personal website. Um, for me, it's my personal website. I don't post as much on Instagram as probably I should. <laughs> but I pretty much keep my website as my online portfolio. And James posts as um, his Tumblr account, which a lot of artists do. So... I don't know, I'm kind of still having a debate about what I should put in there and what I shouldn't, how rough should I get in my portfolio. I don't know if this is a question that maybe you've asked yourself. Um, how much of my loose drawing should I put in my portfolio? Um, maybe it's something that we can dig a little further into because it's something that I'm definitely trying to figure out. And if I'm trying to figure it out, I'm gonna assume that can't be the only one, because, you know, none of us are that unique. <laughs> you know, we share something with, with everybody. It's always something that we share with everybody. And I'm just learning to do that, too. I just actually put that in my notes for um, sketching. I started to keep a little note, and if you are familiar with Apple products, you know the little, what is it called? It's called notes. And it's the little yellow and white notebook where you can keep your little ideas and stuff. And I put one in there for drawing and sketching. And I just, whenever I have like a, a moment, I guess, or epiphany or realizing something that is important in that area of drawing or making art, 
I read it down in my little notepad. And one of the things that I realized, and I just wrote it down last night, because I think I probably kind of knew it before, but I never really put it into practice that much, was um, whenever I'm making a face and I'm doing the eyes, and I just, I think I was talking about this Friday, how I wanted to practice sketching faces more. So that's what I did. I started sketching faces more. And what I realized when I was sketching faces, the faces are coming out better if I draw the actual entire eyeball as a full circle, full big circle. And then I draw the eyelids over top of it. So like planning the eye that way, like drawing the full eyeball and then putting the eyelid. So maybe something in that sense, if you wanted them closed, if you wanted them more open, obviously you can put the eyelids more up or whatever. But doing it that way made it a lot more realistic. It made it a lot, it made it have a lot more personality. It made it feel more connected to me. So that's just something that I just realized maybe it helps you out. Hopefully it helps you out. <laughs> At least a little bit. I'm going to go over this drawing now with um, another one. And let's see. I'm going to use a brown color to start to go over this again. And I'm going to show you actually what I, I need a makeshift um, Cintiq glove because <laughs> I lost my regular glove, so I need a fake one out of a little um, $1 Walmart glove. Works, works, right? Up here and put the, at least for where I think I want to put it. And then I'll go up. Okay, let's try this out. And, you know, I really think it makes a big difference. And one of the things that I want you to notice, um, with this one and with a lot of concept art that I see, and it really makes a difference is when you go over the eyes and like the eyeliner with the black. It really makes a big difference, I think. And even like you can see in this one on, on our left, even though this concept art has a lot of desaturated colors, a lot of pale colors, just adding that thick, black around the eyes just makes it more appealing and that's sort of a staple for disney art it's one that um you might not recognize immediately but if you go and start to look back at a lot of disney art you'll see how much that's used and so much of it is um line matching the skin tone line that is corresponding to the clothes and to the shoes. Like these aren't black colors they're using here. These aren't black. They're kind of more corresponding to um, <clears throat> what's around them. But for the eyes, for the eyeliner, you're seeing that really dark black. And I think that really helps to make the character stand out. I think I could even go like a little bit thicker with this. Getting a little bit nervous about the time. How much time do I have left for this drawing? All right, I'm not gonna get the whole drawing done, but I'm gonna do my best to try and get as much of the drawing done as possible. So, and even it's funny, because remember like, I'm saying that, you know, studying and drawing after um, some of these artists is really going to help you to, to really understand where they're coming from, understand their process. Um, you're going to pick up things that you didn't realize just looking at it. And it's funny, um, my new illustration professor said the exact same thing. So I'm not just making this stuff up, guys. It actually is 
what they're teaching in school through, which I didn't even <laughs> realize. So that's kind of a good thing. Well, it's a really good thing because I didn't realize, you know, it just came from me and from trying to trying to get better. But, you know, obviously there's a lot of people out there trying to get better also. There's a lot of artists trying to hone in on their skills. So apparently it's called like a master copy when you really want to go at it and try and make something that looks exactly like um, another artist. And you really do get in there with the color and you can get in there with trying to just get it, the drawing and everything aligned just how that artist made it. But obviously you don't want to pass it off as you, as, you know, that person did it as that's you can run into a lot of trouble with that. This is just simply for the process of learning. Let's see. All right, so we're gonna do this one. This is a nice one, I think. This change of size. I'm trying to get as, I'm gonna actually try and get as much of this drawing in as possible. Hopefully it all registers and it all works out. But I'm gonna try and get as much of this drawing in the picture as possible. Incarnate, give us another 10 minutes to work and then let's see what happens. Take my swatch here. Sparkle. And I'm still getting used to my new nib. I miss my old one. <laughs> my old one had a little spring on it and if you don't know what a nib is it's just a little um, little tiny drawing point on your um, stylus and I had a really cool one before that had a spring on it and everything it was a different texture than what I'm using now <laughs> and I got really used to it but it started to fade and I don't want to scratch my screen so I had to change my nib and I'm not quite used to this one yet but it still does the job. Okay, so we got 10 minutes and I'm gonna start the timer now. Okay, let's see where we can go. I love the horse. This horse actually is kind of Chuck Jonesy in a sense. It kind of looks a little bit Warner Brothers. It's a little bit silly on the silly side, but at the same time I can see like old school Disney, like silly symphonies sort of in it, but at the same time, it's modern, so I just like that it's sort of combining all these different. I can even see a little bit of like Nickelodeon. That's silly. Cute design. Like, drawing like this, I really think comes from being really comfortable with drawing the real thing. I think that when you draw, especially animals and things like that, and you can really have fun with them and make them really silly. It's not from a lack of um, knowing how to draw the real thing, like some photorealistic drawing. It's really being comfortable drawing the real thing. That's when you start to play with it. And I think that that's really important. So if you haven't drawn at the zoo, <laughs> I want to recommend doing that on a regular basis. Look, even the feet are going outwards. But that comes from that comes from being comfortable drawing the animal in its natural state. And then you can really play around with it and do some fun stuff. I can kind of put things in that I know are supposed to be there. Okay. And the more that you draw animals, the more you're gonna be comfortable drawing animals. But I say draw what you love, because when you draw what you love, you can play around with whatever that is. Like if you love drawing cars, um, you can start to play around with drawing cars and you can, you know, make characters out of them and you can have, you know, fun and interesting designs and you'll enjoy the process. You know, for me, it's animals, but for somebody, I mean, some people prefer just drawing people. So it just depends, you know, what that thing is that you really love to draw. And if you draw it enough of the real thing, 
you're really going to have fun making cartoons out of them. And I'm trying to draw this guy. And he has a really kind of simple shape, but pretty compelling. Like, simple, simple shape, but, but really kind of interesting. If, well, it's more than kind of. I think it's really interesting. Like, I if I was the art director and somebody gave me this as a concept, I would be pretty happy. Like, hey. And obviously that depends on what the, you're going for. But I'd be like, hey, this is really cool. I like what you're doing. And I didn't give him enough neck space. Space out his neck a little bit further out. Maybe right there. And a little bit more down. Fill in the blanks. And let's see, the dog. Look how the. <laughs> it's just like one long hot dog, seriously. Like the shape is so simple that it's, it's genius. <laughs> Simplicity, like really being able to simplify your shapes, is really going to tell people that you know what you're doing. If you can simplify it and really get it on, on the money, then that means you're, you're doing a good job. And I feel like, you know, that's that's the kind of what's so special about um, making caricatures and people that make caricatures, when they really know what they're doing, they can really simplify it to a super cartoony type of a thing, type of a design, but it still looks exactly like the person. Have you ever seen um, caricatures like that? Like, it's so crazy and, like, so so simplified or just like one big egghead or something like that but it looks just like the person i see those i don't think i can quite do that <laughs> not yet anyway but um i've seen those and it's it's really it's people appreciate that even people that have no, no um idea how to make art or anything like that people still appreciate that sort of thing and there's a million, um, especially you see a lot of political caricatures like that and different famous people. But it's really neat because you still recognize them right away even though it looks so bizarre. In a sense. These are really cool. I love this little pig. It's so cute. That's really cute design. You don't need that little hair or something. Pig. Just like a hair. That's cute. Okay, who am I missing? I'm missing the monkey i think this is yeah it is it's a monkey on his back <laughs> literally i can't really know how he came up with this but this is really cool Where he's got like a little t shirt on or something. I don't know if you guys ever seen that movie Monkey Trouble. I used to love that movie when I was, when I was a kid. <laughs> monkey Trouble. I had that little actress in the Capuchin Monkey. That Capuchins were really cool when I was a kid, also. I wanted one very badly. Apparently, they bite. And they can bite pretty hard, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll have my dream of having a capuchin monkey. You never know. People have had more abstract pets, I'm sure. Obviously, I've seen it. I watch Animal Planet. Actually, I don't watch Animal Planet anymore because I don't have it. I wish I still had Animal Planet, but I still watch a lot of Nat Geo, Nat Geo Wild and stuff. I have that <laughs> at least. This is something. And the horse actually has a sweater. Look at that. The horse has a sweater. Like I said, I don't even know where these, um, you know, what these designs were for, but they're still really, really neat. I'm not seeing how much time we have. I didn't even draw the little boy yet, or the little girl. I didn't even realize how much time do we have. You know what? I'm just going to start. 
Um, we're going over it. Sorry, little girl. That's why she looks sad. Sorry, I'm not able to draw you. But I'm going to try and do some of the outline, at least a little bit of it. Really thick eyebrows, really thick, really dark eyebrows. And I'm gonna just draw everybody's eyes since those are in black. Really kind of really standing out to me. A little abstract. If you guys have ever seen, um, you know who we could do? Gosh, have you ever seen the old Mr. Magoo shorts? Oh my goodness, I used to love those. Um, I haven't seen them in a while. I used to have the VHS and I have no idea where it is now. But talk about some classic animation. Um, I don't even know how I had access to so much good animation at your age. <laughs> I'm telling you, they don't make them like that anymore. I will have to figure out who that was. And if no one gives me an artist to, to do next week, then maybe we'll have, we'll have to study. I'll have to figure out who was the artist responsible for those shorts. For design, doing your design work and all of that. I'll have to do a little research. But I think that would be a good one to study. Absolutely would. I have to look into that. Oh my goodness, that's really exciting. I have to look up all of my old favorites. Well, I mean, those were really good. And you know what? I am embarrassed to say this, but. I have never seen, <laughs> I don't even want to say it out loud because I, I mean, I feel ashamed every time, every time it comes up, but I have never seen a Miyazaki film. Mm, I know, that's horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 but I've never seen a Miyazaki film. I don't know who Miyazaki is and we're in the same boat. <laughs> He's an incredibly, incredibly, um, Famous animator based in Japan. He's done a lot of, I think his most famous work is uh, Spirited Away. I haven't seen it. Um, I think I've seen clips. Well, I know I've seen clips of his work, but I've never like seen a full movie of his, unfortunately. And I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where they're available, but I guess, you know, at least by now, if it's not on Netflix, I should, should have had the, something to in myself to go and buy his movies, at least one of them, so I can at least see what all the fuss is about. Um, yeah, I'm embarrassed. But at least I'm honest about it. <laughs> I will definitely... I'm, I mean, I guess the, my only excuse is I'm not a huge anime fan. I think, I don't know why. Why am I not? I think I was partially because I was born in a different era than what, you know, the, I mean, there was a huge rise, I think, in the 2000s with anime, with anime in the 2000s. I'm um, sorry. But, I mean, obviously, enemy was around long enough. And I will have to say that there are a couple of favorites that I have. Like, I definitely watched Sailor Moon. I watched Pokemon. I remember when it came out. I was in high school already when they came out. And I like those. But there aren't too many others that I've seen. I don't know. Maybe I just missed the rush. 
I mean, there are others. There's Speed Racer. There's Dragon Ball. I did watch a little bit of Dragon Ball, but I haven't watched, you know, I'm definitely not in the realm of, like, the mega fans that I'm aware exist. So, I don't know. I'm a little bit... I'm definitely behind on anime. Hopefully, one day I can catch up. I don't know. <laughs> I think my biggest deterrent was seeing... Um, the anime version of the little mermaid <laughs> i think that has been the biggest deterrent for me from anime it it just crushed my spirits it made me sad <laughs> it was horrible um their ariel died in the movie and it was just sad it was it was just sad i mean in the other one was that my sister used to watch um the last unicorn but I, don't, I haven't watched that movie in a long time, but what I do remember, all I can remember is at some point in that movie, I was going to that also. So, I didn't watch it again. But, oh man, I don't know. All I can say is that I was just really deterred by that anime version of The Little Mermaid, and I think I just didn't want to see, didn't want to see much anime after that. So, that's my little excuse, but it's not, not, good enough probably <laughs> um i should be more open-minded i'll try to be i'll try to be more open-minded okay we had a couple extra minutes to work on this one just because our last pose is going to be a 10 minute pose also and we've had a few extra minutes okay i like this one this one was pretty fun to draw so hopefully you like this one yeah on to our last pose of the day and it's going to be a Moana art so let's pick I don't know a couple of them I'm only going to be able to do one so let's see which one can we use and I didn't even do that great hair on the horse the horse has really awesome hair I, she reminds me a lot of that um, that Pretty nerd girl in um, Big Hero Six. <laughs> so yeah, the horse reminds me of that. Let's go ahead to our Moana art. Which one should we choose? Oh no, I have time to do. I feel like we should do this one. This is a good one. All right, so make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And let's see. Let's see this. And I'm going to go ahead and start our timer again for 10 minutes. Oops. All right. Let's start our timer. And I'm going to grab my swatch. Red, and we're going to go back into doing some of these. Hopefully, we'll do it some more than justice. This is concept art from Moana. Obviously, it doesn't look anything like the final design looks, but look how much fun you can have with just playing around with concept art. It doesn't have to look, it's just like shooting through your ideas. It's so neat the whole process of finding designs, finding the look of a movie. Um, that's something if you're interested in, that's, you know, that's a career option, you know, finding the look of a movie, it's all of that is visual development. And I think that's pretty neat. And maybe you even want to do that with maybe a project that you're working on, just experiment with, um, designs don't be afraid if it's not going to look like the final um thing that you have the final design it's okay it's you're just gonna play around with um with design it doesn't have to look like the final thing you can just go through different ideas whatever is in your head that maybe you want to try out maybe you got inspired at an art museum or at a gallery 
and I think these are great places for you to go. It doesn't matter if you're in um, cartooning or animation, you still have to go to these places, go to the galleries, go to the art museums, you know, see the work, get inspired and make something. I think that's the whole purpose of galleries. It's like, <laughs> go there and get inspired and, and make something. Look how light the color is on her um, nose. Like they use a really light color for the line on the nose. It's almost, almost like a not there, there but not there. So it's like really more of a rounded part. And I can make this wider. Thick eyebrows. And even I'm seeing like, you know, even the, the, what Glenn King did, I feel like <laughs> they will last in Disney forever, will last in Amazing forever. Um, just the big flowy hair, it's almost like, it's a lot like Ariel's. And I'm going to start to just go over a line and get out this one. about the eye. I'm doing a more finalized line drawing over it. Um, and you'll see this a lot with um, girls of color in animation. The top lip is a lot often um, more full than the bottom lip. And you see that in real life sometimes, but I feel like, feel like they really exaggerate it in animation, which is okay. It's for an appealing design a lot of the time. Neck, I'm gonna make a little further back. You see when it goes for the back. Coming over the shoulder. And I'm really starting to focus now, so if I start to wear a little bit quiet, <laughs> you'll know why. Just trying to figure out this whole process here. Get a decent 
outcome, hopefully. I really love the way he designed Pua here. You can go over Pua's eyes after with the darker shade. Little eyebrows. Every princess has to have a dress and a and a side and an animal sidekick, right? Is that what Maui says? <laughs> Like I can't say that enough because I really do. Okay, let's figure out his hand shape. Remember to simplify the hand when you're drawing it. Don't make it harder than it is. And then it needs to be. One more thing about this. Trying to be a little bit more conscious of the shape here. Yeah. Let's see. Hmm. And look how faint he drew the back leg. It's a really, it's a totally different color than the front leg, which I think is pretty interesting. I wonder why, how we got that. I know, like when you're doing layout and backgrounds, um, you're told to, and this is what I've heard um, from people who've done it, who actually do, you know, landscaping. The further the distance out, you're supposed to draw lighter, and that really is to represent, you know, the fact that there's, I don't know what it's called, but there's things in our ear, <laughs> little specks of dust and things that make it look, as you look out into the distance, it has like this haze over it, like a white haze, and that's really just all of the layers of dust um, in between here and there. And it, that's why things kind of get lighter in the distance. When you look out on the mountains and you see the farthest mountain out, it's really, really um, pale looking. And that's because of that. And he did that with just the leg. I mean, obviously, it's not that far out. But it's still like he still is thinking about that. Okay, that's our timer. I'm going to... Been a, I wanna spend a few minutes. I wanna see if I can guess the colors in my palettes without eye dropping them. I don't know if that is helpful. <laughs> I don't know if that makes a difference, but I just wanna learn color better. I'm gonna try and do that. I'm gonna just try and guess some of these colors. Even without my um, kind of trying faintly over with some color. Get her hair in there. And look a little bit crazy. But I just want to try something. I try and get a little bit of that color in there. No. I get guess her skin tone.
I don't want to I wanna undrop it. <laughs> I don't find anyways of wanting to eye drop it, but I don't want to at the same time. I don't know. Same color, but this works. And I didn't use the eye dropper. I'm trying to trying to guess. Trying to figure out color a little bit better. I was saying I just want to be better at that. That's what I said. I and, I, and to do the color, I'm just working on a separate layer underneath the line. I'm not um, doing it on the same layer as my line or just erase my line. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to uh, you know what would be fun to just after I go ahead and I guess my colors is to like go ahead and then I drop it and see how close I was to his actual colors. That might be fun. So I'll have to use that another time or off camera, <laughs> I should say anyway. But it's something that you can practice too that will help you to train your eye a little bit better so you know you're able like the, i think the biggest benefit to that is so that you're able to use color and to pick color without depending on the eyedropper because when you're using traditional paint there's no eyedropper you have to eyeball it and find the color through your eyeball so it's like it can i think it probably well, yeah, I think it's definitely a disadvantage if you don't know how to pick. That's wrong. Um, color by eye, it can be a hindrance to you. And I don't want it to hinder you. I don't want it to hinder me either. I'm trying to find that color. It's more pink neutral. Yeah, because I really want to be able to pick color and pick good color with traditional paint, not just in Photoshop. So I don't want to be too reliant on um, just, you know, using that eyedropper again. This is not a perfect color match, but at least I'm doing it by eye. I don't want it to be a handicap in the long run. So I pick a nice purpley color for her lips that she has there. And a nice teal color. And a little thing that she has going on here. And let's get Pua. Look at Pua. So cute. I love this version of Pua. Alright, let's see what we got. I'm just going to just roughly put some color in. Isn't, obviously, I'm not trying to be exact, but I'm trying to at least complement it somewhat. Give it a little bit more life. And I'm going to grab my color that I picked earlier for her body and just make it a little bit darker for her. See, even her eyes is like a light pink color. Not, definitely not white that he picked for her eyes. And it doesn't look like there's any color there for her. Um, it doesn't look like there's any color for her. Um, 
what's it called? Cheeks. Doesn't look like it's a separate color. I'm gonna try and pick out that nice light color that he has for her top. And he's using complementary colors, if you didn't notice. Um, it's one thing to look out for, especially when um, you're making your own work. You want to try and complement colors. He's using um, blue tone and orange. Blue and orange are complementary. So it's something to definitely look for. You want to pay attention to some of that. Just have a minute or two to go. Running out of Running on the clock here, but I think we can I think we can still do it. It'll still be okay. Darker gray for her little spot here. I'm not sure if Pooh is a boy or a girl. Honestly. Grab this one here. More from here, and I'm going to call it a day. I would really like to grab and color her ear in. I want to not call it a ear. Hopefully this was helpful. I definitely think it was awesome. It was fun. Um, don't always get to do a full color like this, but it was definitely a fun thing, I think. Let me try and grab a scratchy color. That he's, I'm not sure what kind of pen he's using for the scratchiness, but let me see what this looks like. Just want to look on the outside. It's probably not quite this. I like it anyway. Maybe it's a bit too much right here. All right. So we're going to call it a day here. This was so much fun. I loved it. I loved it, loved it. Um, love doing Moana. It's my favorite to do, <laughs> obviously. But um, it was a lot of fun. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for which artists you'd like to study for studying the masters. It could be any um, character designer or animator that has published work. And um, yeah, let me know what you think. And make sure you like and subscribe so you can get any updates on this channel. And I'm just so grateful that you guys are here today. And as always, just want to remind you to be grateful, live balance, and be yourself. Have a great week. And I will see you guys here on Friday. And take care. Bye-bye.